From space, the cities of the world at night appear as a sea of lights. And behind the lights are millions of different homes, each one with its own people, with their own interests. Yet, they all have one thing in common. They're all consuming more and more energy and materials, and they're all producing rubbish. Rubbish that becomes hidden in the blur of modern living. Every week these black bags are filled and every week they're emptied. Three million of them in London alone. The average householder generates around half a tonne of waste every year. Waste is really a waste of resources because every time we dispose of something that could be recycled it means that new materials have to be found and processed instead. But instead of simply disposing of the waste, it can be put to good use. To find out how, let's explore the waste problem as if it were a forensic investigation of a crime scene and take a closer look at what goes in the bin. In here, we've got some rotting vegetables, newspapers, old clothes, leftover food, glass, plastic bottles, cans, cardboard packaging, magazines, hmm, soiled nappies, and eggshells. We don't need a forensic scientist to tell us where all this comes from. Throwing away rubbish is something we do every day. But if we think of this as a resource instead of rubbish, we can see that there's a lot of hidden wealth going in the bin. For example, the materials for these cans have to be extracted, transported, smelted, refined and rolled. And all that effort uses a massive amount of energy and causes pollution. But recycling an aluminium can, for example, will save 90% of the energy used during mining and smelting and prevent the associated pollution. In addition, the metal will be put to good use instead of being sent to landfill. This makes a lot more sense than digging materials out of the ground just to bury them again. Most of the material, the metals, the glass, the plastic bottles, the paper and cardboard, almost half of what goes in the average household bin can be recycled. In fact, when you separate it out like this, there's not much that can't be recycled. But there's the problem. When it all goes in the bin, it's not separated out. And that's the biggest hurdle there is to recycling, because one thing contaminates another. The Riverside Waste Partnership has tackled this problem with the Orange Bag Scheme. This is operated within the boroughs of Wandsworth, Hammersmith and Fulham, Kensington and Chelsea and Lambeth. Because these four boroughs are working together in the same scheme, they can collect a lot of recyclable materials in one go and at regular intervals, which makes recycling economically efficient. For example, instead of going in the bin, into the orange bag goes plastic bottles, paper, cans, glass and cardboard. By keeping the easily recycled materials segregated from the rest of the waste, they can be processed and turned back into new products. We'll catch up with the orange bags later. Our waste pile is shrinking, but we can reduce our waste even further 
long before we have to even consider putting it in the bin. Some households buy things just to throw them away. It sounds crazy, but it's true. As much as a third of the food we purchase is thrown away. We often buy more than we need on impulse or because we're attracted by special offers. Then, sometime later, when they've gone out of date, in the bin they go. Then there's the plastic bags. Do we need new ones every time we go to the shop? When well, we could just take the ones we used last time. So, we can reduce or even prevent waste in the first place by not buying what we don't need and then reusing things either for the same job or another purpose. We've removed quite a lot from the bin, but what about the rest? A lot of it is organic material such as potato peelings and vegetables. For many households this doesn't have to leave the garden. Home compost bins, like this one, just need an occasional stir and the worms and microorganisms in the compost do the rest. You can make this compost from dead leaves, plant trimmings, grass cuttings, vegetable peelings, tea bags and even bunches of dead flowers. And then use the compost to grow new plants. So we've reduced our rubbish even more. The remaining waste that can't be recycled can be used as a fuel to generate electricity and heating. This saves the use of fossil fuels such as coal or gas. So by the time we've taken out the recyclables, reused what we can and composted much of the organic material, there's very little left. We can reduce the amount we put in the bin to a point where only a small fraction needs to go in the black bag. Both black bags and orange bags go to the transfer station and MRF, Materials Recycling Facility, at Smuggler's Way. A transfer station is a central point for the collection and bulking up of the waste before it's sent elsewhere. In the tipping hall, the black bag waste is compacted into containers, which reduces its volume making handling and transport more efficient. Environmental impact is further reduced by using another natural and renewable resource for transportation of the black bag waste on the next leg of its journey, the Thames. We'll meet up with those containers further down the river. Also at Smuggler's Way, the public can bring their own waste and recyclables. This facility has been designed to make recycling as simple as possible, with colour-coded signs and piers that run alongside each skip to make it easy to tip the waste. Because there are many different kinds of waste materials that could contaminate each other and make recycling difficult or even impossible, it's important that they are collected in separate containers. There are skips for all the main types of household wastes such as scrap metal, engine oil, cooking oil, garden cuttings, wood, rubble, cardboard and also electrical items. Old clothes and shoes and books and CDs can also be brought here for sending to charity. If you are unsure about how to dispose of any of your waste, the Western Riverside Waste Authority website lists all the types of waste you can bring to the site along with opening times and advice on recycling. You can even bring items such as old washing machines, computers, fridges and microwaves. Where possible, these items are repaired and refurbished on site here at the Rework Centre. Some items may just need a new pump, thermostat or door lock. Others may be beyond repair, but these are then broken down and the parts used as spares for other products. All the items are then thoroughly checked in this test bay to make sure they are in good working order. 
and an electrical safety test is carried out on every machine. This repair work creates employment and the products are then sent to local charities for resale. Instead of waste, we have an economic, social and environmental benefit. Materials such as the garden waste will go to a large-scale composting site. Unlike the garden composter, where the worms do most of the work, this site first shreds the green waste and then keeps turning it over and over again in a large pile called a windrow to keep oxygen flowing through it. This allows bacteria to break down the waste and turn it into compost. This can be blended with other material and sold as a peat substitute. But what happens to all those orange bags? At the other side of the tipping hole, they slide into a huge bunker. This is where the recyclables begin their journey into the murph. The materials in the orange bags are of course still mixed together and so before they can be sent for recycling into new products they need separating. The bags are mechanically split open and the contents are sorted into different categories using a variety of human and automated systems on a roller coaster journey on the appliance of science. First, the orange plastic bags are removed and sucked by a vacuum into an overhead bin. Then, a large vibrating inclined screen uses gravity to separate the heavier cans, glass and plastic bottles which fall to the bottom of the screen from the lighter materials, the cardboard, paper and plastic bags which are carried over the top to the next conveyor. Another screen takes out large pieces of cardboard and this one removes the paper. Any plastics that get through the mechanical screens are then removed by hand in a quality control check. Meanwhile, the cans and plastic bottles are dropped down onto a different conveyor belt. Steel cans are then easily extracted using a large rotating magnetic drum. And the aluminium is sorted using what's called an eddy current separator. Now for the plastics. There are several types and colours of plastic that find their way into your bin and these have to be separated into their different categories. An intense light is used to detect each type of plastic and then blasts of air whisk them onto separate conveyors almost faster than the eye can see. A similar process sorts the bottles into their colour types. The sorted materials are then baled and stacked, ready for transport. From here, the materials can then be sent for processing. This is where recycling really begins. For example, the paper will be pulped and processed into new paper. The cardboard will be turned into new cardboard products. The metals will go back into industry. The plastic bags will become new bags. And some of the plastic bottles will come back as new bottles. But not all the materials will be recycled into the same type of product. For example, some of the waste plastic might be used in the manufacture of pencils. And some of the waste glass will be turned into building sand. But what of the black bag waste? While the recyclables have been hurtling around the conveyors at Smuggler's Way, the black bag waste has had a sedate journey down the Thames to the energy from waste plant at Bexley. Using the river for the distribution of waste by barge is a far more sustainable means of transport, saving 100,000 lorry trips a year, reducing congestion on the roads and cutting local air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions.
and instead of disposal, the black bag waste will now be used to generate electricity. The plant at Bexley resembles a vast James Bond set for its sheer scale, automation and technology. The black bags are mixed using a giant crane. Each grabful is equal to the contents of one of those yellow containers. Mixing the bags ensures an even consistency when the waste is discharged for burning. The combustion temperatures are computer controlled to ensure efficient and complete burning. The heat is used to create steam in three giant boilers. The steam then drives turbines to generate electricity. 30 tonnes of waste are burnt for each boiler every hour. Up to 2,000 tonnes of waste a day, generating enough electricity to power 100,000 homes. A series of sophisticated filters cleans the exhaust gases to prevent any air pollution. Even the ash that remains is put to good use and is recycled into aggregates for road building. Generating electricity in this way is just another example of how we can find the wealth hidden in waste and turn it from being an environmental problem into a social benefit. So, when you have to throw something in the bin, think about what comes next and how you can help by keeping the clean plastics, paper, cans, glass and cardboard separate from the waste that needs to go in the black bag. By not buying what we don't need, reusing what we can and through the simple but important actions of separating our waste, recycling, composting and then buying recycled products, we can all help reduce the pressure on the Earth's limited resources.